Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Hear and Do the Right Thing. I'm your host, Brother Sam. Now, this is the second message in the series, Why People Need to be Restrained. Why People Need to, to be Restrained. Today, the focus is on parents. Parents. Now, what do parents have to do with restraining people? Or more directly, what do parents have to do with restraining children and teenagers? They have a lot to do with it. You see, the role of the parent is central in helping to develop moral character in our young people. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, I want to be clear about what I mean by restraining people. To be restrained means to be muted, to be confined, to be controlled, to be boxed in, to set limitations, to be led, and to be directed. Now, most importantly, the key in restraining people is restraining them from a lifestyle of doing or practicing evil, rebellion, and sin. Why? Because all people are sinful by nature. Yes, all humanity is born with a sin nature, separated from God and headed for death, hell, and the grave, never to be reconnected back to God, unless... But God had established a solution for this depraved nature of mankind. That solution is in Jesus Christ, by his death on the cross, burial, resurrection, and ascension back to heaven. This loving act presents all humanity with a hope of reconciliation back to God, the gift of salvation, and to escape the certainty of hell and complete separation from God. So why is restraining important? Obviously because it gives us an opportunity to resist our proclivity, our tendency to rebel and give us a chance to be saved, to receive Jesus, to have salvation, to save us from death and the hell which was made for the devil and his angels. So parents play a central role in the beginning of our, our lives, through our teenage years. Now I know that it's hard to accept the truth that babies are born with a sin nature, with a selfish nature. They look so cute, so cuddly, so sweet, right? But have you ever seen how a baby or toddler behave when they don't get what they want? They cry, they wail, they bawl, they throw a tantrum. Why is that? They want what they want when they want it. Hungry or not, they don't like being restrained or denied from what they want. All are born with a sin nature and there is no one who is born good. No, not one as the scripture says in Romans. And you know something? Thank God he made babies little. Otherwise, they might knock over their parents to get whatever they want. Babies need the restraining hand of parents. So parents are the first restraining authority ordained by God. Parents, yes, are the first restraining authority ordained by God. Parents have the responsibility to train a child to know what is right from wrong, to restrain their rebellious, sin-prone nature. Without the restraining hand of parents, the future of our society would be chaos everywhere. Thank God for parents. Now, do you remember times when our parents warned us about certain company we keep, certain people we're hanging out with, certain groups that we're hanging out with, some people we're running with? Why parents do this? Because they already have experience. But you're a child. You're a teenager who thinks that you know better than your parents. And you say, oh, there's nothing wrong with this group. 
the guys are cool they are nice people but deep down inside your heart you know at least something is wrong teenagers listen to this do you have any friends who bully people who undermine others who cheat on exams who steal stuff from the department stores and you're silent about it why you don't want to be a snitch you want to be part of the group you want to be recognized by others but you know it is wrong and your parents taught you better than that they taught you right from wrong in addition many people of those groups you followed have a tragic end death prison or a troubled life these are the facts there are some of the results of the sin nature of human beings of course there are many exceptions but it's only by the grace of god that some of us survived our teenage years some people may not believe this but the devil and his fallen angels influence people who rebel and do wrong yes yeah, satan is real satan is a real personality in the spirit realm satan tries to destroy your nature early in life he has a kingdom that he works with so you and i need to listen to our parents their instructions are restraint against wrongdoing against evil and against wickedness this is a god ordained function for parents now the book of proverbs is very very critical for this especially the first seven chapters are excellent guidelines by which parents can lead their children and restrain their desires to do selfish acts let me give some examples proverbs 1 8 to 10 says my son hear the instruction of your father do not forsake the law of your mother for there will be a graceful ornament on your head and chains about your neck my sinner son if sinners entice you do not consent that is clear and direct so listen to your parents honor your parents i'm an adult and i still listen to my parents because you can't by wisdom god ordained parents for this you see the restraining hand of parents empower children and teens to be willing to stand up and say no to wrong things done by their friends or they're done by their classmates or colleagues if parents fail to clearly instruct by word and deed good moral standards then children will fulfill the scriptures which says bad company corrupts good character parents moral leadership is important also god provides a blessing for honoring parents in the book of ephesians the first three verses of chapter six says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with promise here it is verse three that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth you hear that promise it may be well with you and you live a long life one of the reasons why so many young people are dying early in society is because of dishonoring their parents is dishonoring this promise by god many die for that in fact many of us adults realize the value of parental restraint in our lives when we are in our 30s now there are people who object to my proposal my presentation of the necessity of parental authority and restraint they would cite for example oh it's an encroachment on the freedom and self-expression of children and adults and teenagers children have rights huh? and we should emphasize how they feel about rules how they feel about restraint we see this 
open attack on parental authority from many quarters, including the government institutions, like the Education and Child Welfare Departments, and social groups, and social services, and Hollywood. Parental authority is under attack. In my view, God gave parents the responsibility for teaching their children the moral standards for life. Not the government, not the schools, not the universities, not the social institutions. Morality is not based on what is popular, or what's polling data, or what the celebrities and high-profile people do in our society. Feelings are important, but feelings does not determine character. We express feelings, but we live by principles of truth and discerning between right and wrong. Parental restraint keeps you from sin, protects your life, and gives you a solid foundation for life relationships. Sure, many rebel. Many ignore the restraint, but most to their detriment. We have seen cases where young men get shot by police for stealing, robbery, or some other violent criminal act. We have protested about police brutality, but do we know the truth? Sometimes we hear people saying, he was a good young man. He was so mannerly. He treated people with kindness. But sometimes this is far from the truth. Sometimes the young man dishonors his parents or was rebellious against parental authority. We must try to learn the truth before reacting irresponsibly in certain situations. Parental authority must be honored in our society, in our communities. Because what? God ordained parental authority to lay the foundation for overcoming our sin nature. A reconciliation back to God through Jesus Christ. Parental restraint is a good thing ordained by God. It is the foundation on which the future salvation of our children are built. Parental authority must be honored. In summary, I can conclude that parent, parental restraint is the first guidepost through which God's calling will be fulfilled in the life of every child and every teenager. So parents, please continue to restrain your children in obedience and the love of God, in walking in love. Indeed, parental restraint is a good thing ordained by God. Honor your parents. In closing, on behalf of HADTRT and BBT TV, I want to thank all of you for watching. Please share this information with others, your family and friends. We hope that the principles we share will help to advance our thinking, especially in the lives of our young people. We would like to hear from you. And remember, you always need to hear and do the right thing. Knowledge is powerful. But the wisdom of God is the principal thing. Until next time, see you right here. Peace.